What do you do when your country is literally running out of land? Not in a hundred years, not even in 50, but right now. Singapore, tiny, hyper-dense, and surrounded by rising seas, is betting $100 billion on an idea that could either save its future or drown it for good. Welcome to the most ambitious climate megaproject on Earth, Long Island. Singapore is a nation built on limits. Tucked between Malaysia and the sea, it covers just 728 square kilometers, an area smaller than New York City. Yet within this tiny footprint, 5.9 million people live, work, and thrive. That's more people per square kilometer than almost any other country on Earth. But Singapore's real challenge isn't just about space, it's about elevation. Roughly 30% of the country lies less than 5 meters above sea level. That means entire neighborhoods, airports, and highways exist just a few storms away from being a coral reef. And as climate change accelerates, that buffer shrinks with every passing year. And this actually isn't a new problem. Since the 1800s, Singapore has relied on land reclamation, digging, dredging, and filling the sea to create new ground. And over the last few decades, the country has added over 130 square kilometers of land. Marina Bay, Changi Airport, and even parts of the Central Business District all sit on what used to be the ocean. But now, the strategy that once gave Singapore room to grow is hitting a wall. The demand for housing is continuing to rise. Roads, rail lines, and ports are pushed to the limit, and all the while, rising sea levels and erratic weather threaten to undo a century of development. Singapore doesn't just need more land, it needs land that can survive the future. So, what do you do when your coastline is shrinking, your land is maxed out, and the sea is knocking at your front door? If you're in Singapore, you build the future. Literally. In a move as bold as it is breathtaking, the government has unveiled plans for a $100 billion megaproject that could reshape the country forever. It's called Long Island, a vast new stretch of man-made land along the eastern coast, designed to do two things at once, defend against rising seas and unlock entirely new urban possibilities. But this isn't just about stacking sandbags. This is about new homes, green neighborhoods, integrated transit systems, and freshwater reservoirs carved right into the reclaimed zones. It's part seawall, part city, part climate insurance policy. And the scale? It's staggering. At an estimated $100 billion, Long Island would cost more than three times the combined budgets of Marina Bay Sands and the Chungi Airport expansion. It's one of the most expensive climate adaptation projects in the world by far. But there's a twist. It's not a one-time project. Long Island will unfold over decades, in phases, evolving with technology and the climate itself. It's long-term thinking for a country that refuses to leave its fate to chance. I mean, it's kind of crazy. A nation so small you can barely see it on a map is now planning to build entire islands from scratch to secure its future. And this is just the beginning. Picture yourself standing on East Coast Park, where families picnic under palm trees and cyclists weave through winding coastal trails. Just offshore, the future is taking shape, not metaphorically, but literally. This is the site of Long Island, a series of massive man-made islands set to rise from the sea like stepping stones into tomorrow. Stretching across Singapore's southern coastline, these new land masses won't be simple extensions of concrete and steel. Each island is being strategically designed to serve multiple roles. A seawall to keep the rising ocean out, a home for tens of thousands, and a stage for Singapore's next chapter in sustainability. And at the heart of it all are coastal reservoirs, carved between the islands and the mainland. These won't just act as barriers, they'll become vital stores of fresh water, boosting the nation's water security in a climate challenge future. And on top of that, lush green corridors, eco-parks, and carbon-friendly neighborhoods. The goal isn't just survival, it's livability. A place where people can walk to work, bike along the coast, and live in homes powered by the sun cooled by smart ventilation and surrounded by nature. 
And yes, fully integrated transport systems will connect these islands to the mainland, with MRT lines, roads, and cycling paths woven seamlessly into the design. The concept draws from global inspirations, the polders of the Netherlands, where land is reclaimed and protected by dikes, and Japan's artificial islands, engineered for resilience in the face of earthquakes and storms. But Singapore isn't just hidden copy and paste. It's combining the best of both worlds to build something uniquely its own. It's really something. A city rising from the ocean, designed not just to survive climate change, but to thrive in spite of it. And yet, there's no time to waste. This isn't just a construction project, it's a countdown. According to the United Nations Climate Panel, global sea levels could rise by up to one meter by the year 2100. And for most countries, that's a serious concern. But for Singapore, it's existential. The East Coast, home to parks, homes, highways, and even critical infrastructure like Changi Airport, lies barely above sea level, and some of it less than two meters. And already, the signs are here. Flash floods that paralyze traffic. Storm surges batter seawalls. It's not a future threat. It's happening right now. And if nothing changes, the consequences could be catastrophic. Billions of dollars in infrastructure damage, mass displacement, and parts of the nation simply gone. Long Island isn't a luxury. It's the line between adapting and drowning. That's why the timeline matters so much. Construction isn't expected to begin until the early 2030s, with a full build-out by the mid-century. That gives Singapore about 25 years to transform a coastline and shield it from the century ahead. But even with cutting-edge planning, the margin for error is razor-thin. As the tides rise, so does the pressure. This is climate change and fast-forward. A nation that built itself into a global powerhouse now has to literally build its way out of the ocean. So the question isn't whether Singapore will act, because it already has. The question is, can it finish in time? Building a city, as you can imagine, is hard. Building one on water, in the path of rising seas and violent storms, well, that's a whole other level. To make Long Island a reality, Singapore is diving headfirst into one of the most ambitious land reclamation projects ever attempted. It starts with the basics, but on a massive scale. Sand dredging, geostabilization, and seabed preparation form the foundation. Mountains of sand, sourced responsibly, are pumped in to build up the seafloor, layer by layer. Beneath it all, engineers reinforce the base to prevent sinking, shifting, or cracking under pressure. But this isn't just about stacking sandbags. The new island will be raised well above current sea levels, with additional buffers for worst-case future projections. Around the perimeter, a network of protective barriers, engineered to absorb wave energy and prevent erosion, will act like a giant shock absorber against the ocean's wrath. And Singapore isn't doing this alone. They've brought in the world's top minds from the Netherlands, Denmark, and Japan, countries that know a thing or two about battling the sea. These global collaborations are shaping everything from foundation design to flood control systems. And then comes the cool part, the tech. Using AI-powered modeling, Singapore is simulating everything from future storm patterns to soil behavior. Thousands of sensors will be embedded along the coastline, feeding real-time sea level data to smart systems that can adapt on the fly, redirecting water, opening valves, or activating surge defenses in seconds. Even the reservoirs will be smart, part of a living infrastructure designed to learn, adapt, and protect. This isn't just building stuff. It's innovation, defense, and survival engineering wrapped all up into one. Because when you're building against nature, failure isn't an option. What happens in Singapore might just change the fate of cities half a world away. With the Long Island Project, Singapore isn't just building for itself. It's stepping onto the world stage as a climate resilience pioneer. And the entire globe is watching closely, because the problems Singapore faces are unique. New York, Jakarta, Miami, Bangkok, all are grappling with rising seas, land erosion, and crumbling coastlines. Billions of people live in low-lying cities where a few inches of ocean can spell total disaster. That's why Long Island is more than a local fix. It's a potential blueprint, a model for how to fight back against a threat we can't see but can already feel. The technology, the planning, the urgency, this could be the first prototype for future survival. But if it collapses under its own weight, financially, ecologically, or politically, 
it could become the ultimate cautionary tale, a reminder that even the smartest cities can't outbuild nature forever. So, yes, one tiny country is carrying the hopes of many on its back. A nation smaller than New York City is leading the global race to outsmart the sea, and the stakes could not be higher. For all its brilliance and ambition, Long Island is not without its shadows. As the plans surge forward, a growing wave of criticism has begun to rise. Louder, sharper, and deeply personal, environmentalists are raising red flags. Building islands means disturbing marine ecosystems that have existed for centuries. Corals may be destroyed, sediments disrupted, and marine biodiversity thrown off balance. Once pristine coastal waters could be replaced with artificial shorelines, silencing the rhythms of a living ocean. Then there are the fishermen, whose livelihoods literally depend on the sea. Many fear their way of life will vanish, pushed aside by dredging ships, disappearing fish stocks, and new coastlines they no longer recognize. Some coastal communities might even be relocated, displaced in the name of progress. And the price tag, a hundred billion dollars. It's a staggering figure. Critics are asking, could that money be better spent inland? Maybe on green infrastructure, elevated housing, or relocation programs instead of battling the sea toe-to-toe? -to -toe? Others are sounding the alarm on something subtler but just as dangerous. Climate gentrification. Who will get to live on Long Island? Will it be sustainable housing for everyday Singaporeans? Or will the new land become a playground for the wealthy? A glittering fortress built with public money but priced beyond public reach. This isn't just a question of engineering anymore. It's about ethics, equity, and environmental legacy. So how do you feel about that? A miracle of innovation or a monument to misplaced priorities? As the bulldozers inch closer to the shoreline, the debate is far from over. Singapore has never let geography define its destiny. From swampy fishing villages known as kempongs to a skyline of steel and glass, this island has reinvented itself time and time again. It built land where there was only water, stacked vertical gardens into skyscrapers, and floated solar farms across its reservoirs. Adaptation isn't just policy here, it's a way of life. And now, with Long Island, the nation is writing its boldest chapter yet. This isn't just a wall against the ocean, it's a philosophy made real that humans can coexist with nature, not by retreating from it, but by designing with it in mind. That we don't have to be prisoners of rising tides, we can shape the world around them. I hear what you're saying. Yes, it's audacious. Yes, it's risky. But so is everything else Singapore's done to survive, thrive, and lead. Long Island is more than land. It's a symbol, a floating idea that tomorrow doesn't have to be something we fear. It can be something we build. So, what do you call a nation that stares down the ocean and says, not today? Is Long Island the boldest act of nation building in the 21st century, or a high-stakes gamble against a planet that's changing faster than we can predict? Singapore isn't waiting for rescue. It's choosing to build its own lifeline, from seawalls, sensors, and reclaimed dreams. It's pouring a hundred billion bucks not just into concrete and sand, but into a belief that human ingenuity can rise even as the tides do. But we know even the best laid blueprints can be swept away. Nature doesn't play by budgets or timetables. So, the world watches. Cities on coastlines. Nations on the brink. People are wondering if this tiny island with giant ideas might actually pull it off. As the waters rise and the heat builds, Singapore is answering with vision, steel, and sheer willpower. The only question left is, will it be enough?